Hey, it's John McBride in Nashville, Tennessee. I am at Blackbird Studio in Studio A today, and I am here to show you a few of my rare finds. We should begin with microphones. This is a stereo Telefunken 270. Obviously, it has the dual capsules, which can be turned up to 180 degrees apart for stereo recording. Uh, it's the CK12 capsule in this. It also, each capsule has separate control of being cardioid, figure eight, or omni. On the back of this, you can see the serial number, it's 101. However, this is number one, I believe they started with 101 as the first serial number. I'm told there may be one other of these in Europe somewhere, but I've never had any proof of that. I know we have this one and I love it and people still use it to record and we handle it with kid gloves. The only reason I have this second mic is because this is a C24, a stereo C12. Now, the 251 itself didn't come out till around 1959. The C12, the mono version of, of this mic, came out originally in, I think, 1953. Telefunken built this to compete with the C12. Um, they used the same capsule. They have a similar sound, but I've just always been a huge fan of the 251, especially for female vocals. C12s are great too, don't get me wrong. The 270 never went into production, so this is a prototype model. If there's another one out there, please let me know. The only reason I brought the C24, it is also serial number 001. So having a stereo version of a Telefunken 251 or an AKG C12, and having both serial number ones, that's one of my rare finds. One of my favorite pieces of gear we have here at Blackbird is this console. This is a Neve 8078. The input module's at 31105. It um, has always been a great sounding desk. But I, I bought one that I got from Donald Fagan that had a pretty great track record. It started off in Motown, LA, I don't know where it went from there or if it went directly to Fagan from there, but Donald Fagan had it at his uh, River Sound studio in New York. I got a hold of this console in about 2002, did a little research. This console is flat to about 60K. It was originally a quad console, and what we did, we just turned it into two stereo buses. It's not original but I like it better. I just feel like it's got that incredible Neve low end and an incredibly smooth high end. The EQ is musical, the console is musical. Thousands of records have been <laughs> recorded or mixed on this desk. It is uh, just one of my favorite things to play with here at the studio. Another one of my favorite pieces of gear here, we have two of the Motown EQs. Um, these were built by Motown. I was always told they were kind of an emulation of the uh, Langevin EQ, but they also wanted a master gain pot. They built 25 originally. They have very interesting uh, frequency center points. 50, 130, 320, 800 cycles, 2K, 5K, 12.5K. The sound of the Motown is wonderful. If you put it in line and don't adjust any EQ, it sounds better. I just love the circuit. But when you use the EQ, it's again musical. And it makes me very happy when I hear that. I have the Motown EQ and my wife, who's, who's a country singer, Martina McBride, it's in her vocal chain always when she's recording. And that's part of the reason she sounds so great. So anyway, one of my favorites, the Motown EQ. Here at Blackbird, we have a lot of band gear, but not just 
stuff. I mean, everything has a story behind it. When Vinny Caliuto recorded here the first time, I went to him and I said, Vinny, what drums could I have in house where you don't feel like you need to bring a kit? And he goes, ah, you know, John, some old Gretsch round badges, you know? At the time, that's what he said. And so at the time I went out and I found eight or 10 old Gretsch round badge kits and proceeded to start getting them. Now, the 50s round badge was three ply. The 60s, they went to six ply. They both sound great, but my personal favorite is a 22, 13, 16, 50s three ply round badge kit. I think those drums sound godlike. Um, one thing that's really rare to find, and this is why I'm bringing it up, they made an 18 inch floor tom, three ply round badge 50s. And I've been looking for one for 10 or 15 years and finally found one. And I'm gonna let Paul Simmons talk about that because he knows a hell of a lot more about it than I do. And he's a drummer. So take it away, Polly. Hey guys, it's Paulie at Blackbird Studios. And today I'm gonna just show you something really, really cool. This is a 50s era Gretsch round badge floor tom, but it's an 18. And you know what? It's actually the first one I've ever seen from this era. First thing I noticed when we took it out of the box was that it had reinforcement hoops, which Gretsch drums, I've never seen reinforcement hoops on a Gretsch. And this kit over here is a 50s era Gretsch as well. And so I've had a lot of sessions where we need that 18 to give you that classic rock and roll setup. So we found one. John McBride found this and I just put the heads on it and tuned it up and it's mind boggling how good it sounds. I love it. So it's very rare. It's got the double flange hoops from the arrow. They kind of match this kit as well. It's in really good shape. Just super rare. 18 inch Gretsch round badge floor tom. How cool is that? One of my favorite rare finds, and I never realized it until I went through a number of years of life. My favorite rare find is right here. It's the passion that I feel for music. Music to me is, is really one of the most powerful things on earth. You know, it, it's emotional. So this passion that I've always had helped drive me to build a place like Blackbird so that even if my only contribution to a great record was providing a place in which to record, that's okay with me. And all I wanna do is help keep the integrity of making great records up here. Thank you.